How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill. I will fulfill them before all his people. Monsignor Daniel McHugh, my reflection for Corpus Christi and the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the 2nd and the 7th of June. To return love for love. As I wrote this reflection on Thursday the 30th of May, I was conscious that in Rome it is already the solemnity of Corpus Christi, whereas here in England the celebration takes place on Sunday the 2nd of June. One of the customs that will take place in Rome is the procession with the Blessed Sacrament between the Great Basilica of St. Mary Major and the Cathedral Church of Rome, St. John Lateran. It is a procession led by the Pope himself, Francis. Here in England, depending on the local situation, parishes mark the solemnity too with a procession accompanied by a period of adoration and benediction. In Birmingham City Centre this year, there will be adoration, procession and benediction led by our Archbishop between St. Michael's Church and St. Chad's Cathedral. The Solemnity of the Body and Blood of Christ, Corpus Christi, is a liturgical solemnity celebrating the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We believe that Jesus is truly present to us in the elements of bread and wine as we recall the words of Jesus recorded by St. Mark for the feast. As they were eating, he took the bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them. Take it, he said, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them and all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which will be poured out for many. The Feast of Corpus Christi was proposed by St. Thomas Aquinas, the great doctor of the Church, to Pope Clement IV, in order to create a feast focused solely on the Eucharist, emphasizing the joy of the Eucharist being the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. We are familiar with the hymn composed by St. Thomas in the 13th century, Pange Lingua Gloriosi Corporis Mysterium. It is often sung in English as the hymn of the glorious body telling, to the same tune as the Latin. The last two stanzas, called separately Tantum Mergo, are sung at benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. The hymn expresses the doctrine that the bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ during the celebration of the Eucharist. Closely aligned with the practice of procession with the Blessed Sacrament is exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Again, it is a sign of devotion and worship of Jesus Christ, who is present under the appearances of the consecrated host. The 
instruction on Eucharistic worship issued by the Sacred Congregation of Rites on the Feast of Corpus Christi, 25th of May, 1967, reads, The exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, for which a monstrance or a ciborium may be used, stimulates the faithful to the awareness of the marvelous presence of Christ and is an invitation to spiritual communion with him. It is therefore an excellent encouragement to offer him that worship in spirit and truth, which is his due. Speaking to a gathering at Phoenix Park during his visit to Ireland in 1979, Pope St. John Paul II said, The visit to the Blessed Sacrament is a great treasure of the Catholic faith, nourishes social love, and gives us opportunities for adoration and thanksgiving, for reparation and supplication. The solemnity of Corpus Christi leads us to the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It was St. John Henry Newman who said, O most sacred, most loving heart of Jesus, thou art concealed in the Holy Eucharist, and thou beatest for us still. This year marks the 350th anniversary of the apparitions of St. Margaret Mary. It was while she was praying before the Blessed Sacrament that Jesus appeared to her. The first apparition was on December the 27th, 1673, the Feast of St. John the Apostle, and the fourth and great apparition on June the 27th, 1675, the date of the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart. A jubilee lasting a year and a half is underway with the theme to return love for love for this great moment of pilgrimage, liturgies, and meetings. One of the things Jesus asked for when appearing to St. Margaret Mary was reparation for the offences caused by sins of humanity. Pope Francis wrote to participants at a, sym a symposium in Parallel earlier this May, saying, The beautiful practice of the reparation of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is an important practice for all the baptized, even if today it may be somewhat forgotten or wrongly judged obsolete. He said, Jesus asked St. Margaret Mary for the act of reparation for the offenses caused by the sins of humanity. If these acts consoled his heart, this means that reparation can also console the heart of every wounded person. In the context of Jesus' love for humanity, a love we in the Church experience, especially in the Eucharist, we are ever more aware of the deep hurt caused to him by the sin of a self-centered world. And in a Church where the crisis of abuse has come to the fore in recent times, the teaching on reparation opens up a path of hope and truth for the whole body. Love is His name, love is His Lord.